Hello and welcome to Modular in a Week, Day 4, Episode 1, where we are going to make a really simple LFO. Searching online uh, for simple LFO was one of the first uh, matches I found, uh, the one I built here. Uh, this is once again the classic to up amp uh, square wave and triangle wave output but in a LFO low frequency oscillator mode instead of the AAC VCO which is the same when, when we will look at the schematics you will see similarities they're not exactly the same but there are similarities which is interesting once you get into building these things and you find repetitive patterns in many modules so we will get a triangle wave so we finally can get away from the square wave waveforms that we've only used from the oscillator bank so far so a bit more fun ways to uh, alter the signal I've put up a patch here that uses my one LFO immediately regretting what I said in the last episode that I only need buffered multiple from 1 to 2 because in this case I would have needed it to 4 actually uh, so uh, using the buffered multiple and the pass passive multiple I actually in this patch is controlling 2 VCAs and 2 VCOs uh, pitch and uh, opening so here's the patch just a really simple one to show what you can do with a slow LFO and this is the triangle And instead of the, if we take the square, this is the usual one that we are used to. And it also has a high low. Let's go and look at, oh also, uh, one good thing, uh, uh, when uh, David Haliant, who, who built this, again it's a classic design, many have built this before, uh, but this one is, uh, I'm doing according to his schematics, and he also had a PCB for sale. So the one I'm doing today is on a Vero board, as everything else is. Uh, but it's nice to know that you can buy a small PCB like this for seven dollars so that is actually a very good price for a modular unit PCB they are usually over twenty dollars even just the PCBs when buying them so it's good to know if you want LFOs that you can always use you, you never have enough LFOs so it's good to know that you can either buy this or do as I do today uh, build with a Vero board so enough talking about this let's go and look at his page components and let's build something doing a search for simple LFO quite quickly gets us to one of the first results is the David Haliant webpage so and so this is a couple of years ago he made a double uh, LFO circuit which he put in a panel um, and so here's the 
main schematics of the oscillator core of the LFO. Uh, so same as the AAC VCO, we get a triangle out and a square out. And if we look at the um, allaboutcircuits.com circuit, we can see that this is very similar. Uh, and here, one of the things is uh, he put a switch here, so we get two different ranges. And looking at the AAC VCO, I'm guessing we could do that there as well. And that would actually, so we could make the AAC VCO into a LFO as well. Maybe a voltage controlled one at that. Uh, but let's focus on this one right now. So very common design made many, many, many times. Um, one thing though is that there's a new documentation that isn't actually in, in the search result, but here you can see that instead of the TL072 with only two op amps, he now has four. And we can look at this documentation here. We get all the components that we need. And we get the build instructions. We even get one uh, kind of a front panel if we wish to use that one. I used a somewhat sim uh, uh, like this, but I put a switch instead of both square and triangle out. And here we have the schematics. So the schematics is split into parts. So here's the oscillator core. And then from the LFO square and triangle outs, they come here. And this is the output buffer. So we get a buffered output. And also, if we wish, we can have a uh, an attenuator here, so we can choose how much we want the signal out to be. I did skip this one in, my, in the first build I built. Uh, I can see the reason to have it. It would be good, so that might come in the second build I make with the bot uh, PCB that I bought. And the third one here is, so on the LFO out, so on this pin right here, he also adds the circuit for the LFO activity LED. So we get an LED showing us what is happening uh, in the circuit. Which on LFOs is very nice because then you know how fast or slow it goes just by looking at it. So these three together becomes the whole uh, LFO. But now let's dive into the circuitry and build it on Vero board. But before we do that we of course need to look at the components. So intermediate build, I added the complexity, I didn't have that before, so it's intermediate. Uh, so depending on what configuration you choose, either use two jacks or two, uh, or one jack and a switch for the outputs. And also the output potentiometer isn't in the calculation. Uh, I'm going to make two, hopefully, the one I bought, the PCB as well, uh, but at least one. Uh, Tomorrow you'll see that one, and that one is good to make too. So maybe you build more of those and less of these. But at least one is always good to have. It is not that expensive, 585, so less than six dollars for this one. Uh, so I'm building two, so it adds up to about twelve dollars. Twenty-four components, easy enough. The panel is uh, simple enough, so the LED, the rate knob, high-low switch, triangle, and 
triangle square switch CV out uh, either triangle or square depending on what you choose and this one is done on Vero board of course uh, in this case I used one whole pads so all the lines had to be drawn with the legs of the other components or or wire so always I begin by adding the the IC socket and then building around that and again making the PCB as small as possible I did add the connections to add um, output uh, attenuator but I just added a jumper over so it's 100% output all the time but if I wish it's already prepared on the board and this build took a little bit more than an hour I think it took one and a half something like that and here at the end I add the capacitors and the switch for those and the output looking at the end product here you can see the jumper in there is for if I wish to add the the potentiometer on the output I can do that later on there uh, it is not implemented right now it's just a jumper so it's 100% output all the time but easy to just add another jack here somewhere uh, no not another jack add another potentiometer here somewhere and we would have that functionality the um, the capacitors for the uh, range high low is directly on the pins via a header added there and yeah so and added together with hot glue as usual the as I've written here in the paper the um, this circuit here with it where we switch between uh, square and triangle can be doubled uh, not the switch but everything else can be doubled if we want both signals out and because we use a buffer in that case uh, that would make it possible to use them both at the same time without them interfering with each other and that's the module for this episode. One thing that I didn't think of once when I built this one is that it's not voltage controllable. It is made to control other modules, but you can't control this in, in itself. That opens up another dimension of sounds when you can control the controller. Um, and uh, so with that said, in the next episode we'll look at some kind of either make this uh, voltage controllable or another module uh, that we can make it make control uh, voltage controllable so a VCLFO again this one has the same uh, st uh, oscillator as the AAC VCO which is voltage controllable so maybe there can be something done according to that but that is for the next episode hope you like this show it with a thumbs up uh, make sure you subscribe and that you have the bell button so you get the next episode and until next time take care bye